Whether you're joining us virtually, and we invite you, if you're joining us virtually, if you have not already, to please download our full text booklet from sfaec.org. In it, you will find all our hymns and scripture readings, as well as our prayers. And we invite you all to join us in singing the opening hymn, Awake My Soul, Stretch Every Nerve. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia.
a reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th day of King Zedekiah of Judea, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined to the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judea, where King Judea of, Ju of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is at Anath, for the right of redemption by, pur by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard, in accordance with the word of the Lord, and said to me, Buy my field that is at Anath in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field at Anna from my cousin Hanimal and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase containing the terms and conditions and the open copy. And I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Nera, son of Messiah, in the, presence of my <clears throat> in the presence of my cousin Hannibal, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both these sealed deeds of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. There is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight for the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ, who his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until a manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it is he who alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who are in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. Quick quiz. The Bible tells us that money is the root of all evil. True or false? Y'all are quiet today. <laughs> Actually, what we heard in the first letter to Timothy is money is a root of all evil. It's not the article B, but the article A. A root of all evil. And it's important to keep that in mind because in listening to the gospel lesson Deacon Josh just read, we might think that the rich man is in torment because he was rich, but it has more to do with how he used what he was blessed with. Consider the image that was painted for us at the very beginning of the parable. Here is Lazarus, poor and without means to even feed himself, covered with sores, and the rich man is eating lavishly and is going in and out of the house. And one can almost imagine the rich man stepping over Lazarus, ignoring him, because he longed for even a scrap from the rich man's table and did not receive one. Instead, it is the dogs who care for Lazarus. And so all of a sudden, we're thrown in to a world that we're challenged to remember what are we called to do? 
What would the gifts and blessings we have are we called to do? And sometimes we think that we must respond in a certain way to every person, but we are invited instead to consider what Archbishop James Salisbury of the African Orthodox Church in America taught. And he shared this story with my contextual ed professor in seminary, the Reverend Susanna Metz. He said to her, I always thank the person for asking even when I don't have anything to give at the time. I always thank the person for asking even when I don't have anything to give at the time. In other words, what becomes important in that exchange is that one acknowledges the other as a human being, as someone worthy, as someone who is also a child of God. We cannot respond to every request of need in the manner in which we might be asked. But we can engage that person. We can acknowledge that person. And we might, in the process, learn an important lesson. Barbara Brown Taylor famously said, salvation is not something that happens only at the end of a person's life. Salvation happens every time someone find, with a key uses it to open a door he could lock instead. So we're to imagine open doors and gates that swing both ways, not just one way. Ways that we can engage other people. And even when we might not be able to acknowledge what or to give exactly what they're asking for, to take time to acknowledge them. And sometimes with that gate swinging both ways, we might find that they have something to give us that we need, if only we have ears to hear and eyes open to watch. And then we come to the book of Jeremiah and this interesting story that you might have been trying to figure out what was going on. So Jeremiah had predicted that Jerusalem would fall to Nebuchadnezzar and King Zedekiah didn't want that to happen. So he thought if he could lock Jeremiah up in the court and he's not out talking to people, he might stave off what was going to happen. And so Jeremiah gets a vision from God that tells him to talk to his cousin and to purchase a piece of land. Now that might seem strange, but think about it. Babylon is already all around Jerusalem. We heard that in the story. They actually have conquered some land already and are closing in. And the land that Jeremiah is asked to purchase is land that is already conquered by Babylon. And so he, in good faith, measures out the coins. The paperwork is done. His secretary, Baruch, who can come and go as he please, unlike Jeremiah, goes and stores that deed in an earthenware jar. Think of it as our modern day safe, a place where it's protected from the elements and can stay a long, long time. Such an act of faith. Saying, yes, they're here now, yes, we're gonna fall, but there will be a time the land is ours again, even if it's a few decades from now. That's a story of hope. That's a proclamation of living a life of hope. And so today, as we stand on the cusp 
of our 31st anniversary, it's time to remember our story of hope. 1988, Bishop William Sanders and several other people designated by the Diocese of East Tennessee start looking for land, land to build a new church. A group had not yet formed saying they wanted a church. They believed that Ottawa would be the place that a new church would need to be planted. And this was all farmland. We weren't even that close to the interstate exit. I had the privilege of meeting the real estate agent that took them around and they looked for a long time. And she was a little doubtful about their choice. This corner of Ottawa, Georgetown and Providence Road that had become a local dump site filled with discarded appliances, used car parts. It was not exactly the beacon of light they thought they might find. But they believed that it was an important piece of land. A corner lot is always a desirable thing, they thought. And they purchased this land. And it sat for three more years before the first meeting of, could we possibly form a church in Ottawa was held in the summer of 91. Well, by November that year, there was enough interest that they had their first worship service at the James County Courthouse, the place of the local tea room now. And so they worshiped in different places until this initial building could be built in 1995. And as they prepared, they started clearing the land. All that dump site disappeared and it started transforming. And as they were building the walkway we call Pilgrim's Way, they knew that they wanted to make a memorial garden. And of course, that involves going to the commission. And as one parishioner has told me, there were rumblings in the neighborhood that they weren't sure about having a burial ground in their neighborhood. But one of the other neighbors stood up and said to them, have you not seen what this church has done? How they took an eyesore and turned it in to a place of beauty? And so the commission granted us that right. And then, as fate would happen, because our property line used to end at the very top of the hill behind our parking lot, we first acquired the cabin that we call All Saints. And then one of the founding members, Katie Hall, had instructed her son to be sure we had first right of approval when he decided to sell the house. And all of a sudden, we went from that initial investment of just over an acre to nine plus acres. Land that we continue to work and transform as a place to welcome others here and as a place to respond to the needs of our immediate community. I promise you in 1988, they had no idea that the biggest elementary school in Hamilton County would be built across from this property after we had been here not quite 20 years. And in that period, we came to learn about needs of our community of which we were unaware. The number of children in our immediate community that do not have adequate food over the weekend. And thus was born our SAC Pack program, which now is serving over 70 SAC Packs a week to children who would not have adequate food over the weekend. No, that act of hope in 1988 could not have foreseen what came. But as Bishop William Sanders was fond of saying, this corner 
of God's vineyard had much work to do and much blessing to share. And so as we stand ready for that 31st anniversary, we are reminded again of our daily marching orders. Those mission statement that was made quite a while ago, but remains what we are called to still do. And as we remind ourselves of that mission statement, we are charged again and again to look for the ways that we can share the blessings we have received. This space, this community, this corner of God's good vineyard with others. And as we go forth today, may these words be emblazoned in our mind, written on our heart. May we find the lost, may we heal the broken, and may we always, always celebrate God's love for all. the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in, knowing mercy, in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. The burden of the old them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop. We pray for St. John's Cathedral and the Episcopal School of Knoxville, and for Calvary Cathedral, Sioux Falls of our Companion Diocese of South Dakota. We pray for those on our short-term prayer list, Ann Acock, Lynn Bagley, Bill Barger, the Brookman family, Rusty Bird, 
Jeremy Clark, Russ Cole, Becky and Lindsay Kordsmeyer, the Cornish family, the Crockett family, the Dobbs family, Bill and Vicki Dowley, Bill Dozier, Mark Elliott, Kristen Fenske, Dean and Donna Geise, Brett Harnett, Robert Hawks, the Samantha Haynes family, Daniel Hobson, the Roger Hudson family, Canon Beverly Hurley Hill, First Lady Maria Lee, Sandy Lewis, Tegan, Max, and Blaine Lewis, Alyssa Lonis, the Loy family, Gladys Martin, Shelley Martin, Laura Mays, Allison McCants, Carolyn McCleary, Warren McCleary, Margaret McCullough, Gay Moore, the Moore family, Hank and Arlene Pellin, Tams Pemberton, the Powell family, Matthew Pruce, Heller, Heather Ramsey, Gail Reed, Nevaeh Roberts, Darla Smalley, the Sniff family, Kristen Sniff, Buddy Usmiller, Tyler Walden, Gloria Weaver, Fred and Suzanne Wood, Mary Virginia Woods, Allison, Beth, Christine, and family, Lisa, Penny, and for those impacted by hurricanes. On our military prayer list, we pray for Casey Osborne. We also pray for those who have died. On our monthly prayer cycle, we pray for the School of Theology at the University of the South, Sewanee. On our parish family prayer cycle, we pray for Jamie and Larry Hartman, Don Hartsfield, Jan Hayes. And at this time, I invite your own prayers of intercession, petition, and thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. It is wonderful to see all of you all here. And just a quick reminder, we have a communion in a couple of ways. So we want you all to feel comfortable when you come forward and all are welcome at this table. This is not our table, it's the Lord's table. If you prefer, we have the individual chalices that have a piece of bread at the top and a thimble full of wine at the bottom. We also have simple bread wafers that I will have. And if you'd like your wafer dipped in wine, I'll have a small little cup of wine that I can dip it. So you can have a mini chalice, you can have a piece of bread, or you can have a piece of bread dipped in wine, or you can have a blessing. Whichever you want, all are welcome to come forward and share at this table that we give thanks to belongs to our Lord. And as we come forward, 
Hear again the second verse of Psalm 91. He shall say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. page 15. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that sings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. And to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. 
living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at the table, O God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our fruits of bread and wine and ourselves as a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Francis and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared before the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Close Communion Prayer found at the bottom of page 18. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And this week, you all may be seated for quick announcements. Your vestry met Monday night, and Senior Warden, Dearest Bagley, has come off the tech table to make announcements. Thanks, Lou. Uh, we had a great meeting on Monday, and of course the meeting's always open to anybody who wants to come. Uh, our stewardship campaign begins in a few weeks, so please be on the lookout for more information. Parking lot paving is about to happen, so that'll begin after St. Francis Day. Uh, speaking of St. Francis Day, St. Francis Day is coming up next Sunday, and we appreciate everyone who has volunteered to help out. Uh, we have folks who have volunteered. We'll get always use more on Saturday to set up, and then of course Sunday, and you know Sunday takedown, which you know when we have enough people, just goes by like that. So appreciate everybody's support, and again. Please invite your friends, your neighbors, social media, you know, who doesn't want to get their pet blessed, right? Uh, it should be a fun time. Uh, we are, as Lou said, we are now filling over 70 sack packs each week. And with the rising cost of food, this ministry is increasing in cost as the food bank has had to pass along their increases. Uh, if you would like to make a special donation to the sack pack ministry, it would be appreciated. So please note sack pack on, on any, uh, don't specifically on any donation. So thanks for that. Uh, we are going to begin, uh, begin to transition back to normal worship with a procession and assigned lay roles. So if you have signed up to be a reader, a greeter, or other roles, expect to get contacted over the next couple weeks. We will start up our, uh, the old rotation, the old road up after St. Francis Day. Uh, October 23rd at 3 p.m., our own Cindy Solfus Wallace will be performing a recital with her trio. So please join us and support Cindy. Uh, anyone interested in going to diocesan convention? It will be February 3rd and 4th in scenic Johnson City. If you would like to attend, please contact Lou. I don't like the sound of my voice either. It's cool. Uh, our annual parish meeting is tentatively scheduled for Sunday, December 4th. So mark your calendars for that, our annual parish meeting, December 4th. And our next vestry meeting is Sunday, October 23rd at 11.30 a.m. We're going to do that on Sunday after church just because of schedule. So uh, all are welcome. So Sunday, October 23rd at 11.30. That's it. Any questions? Thank you all. Thank you. And real quickly, next week is St. Francis Day, 9 to noon. Saturday set up, food will be provided. Next Sunday we'll have eight and 10 o'clock services. Our bishop will be with us. I want all of y'all to meet him and then stick around after the 10 o'clock service. We're gonna go up the hill, eat hot dogs. We need sides to go with the hot dogs. We're providing hot dogs. There's a sign up out in the narthex for you to bring sides if you feel so moved. We'll all have a meal together up there and then St. Francis Day starts at 1.30 with registration, and it will be a full afternoon. We'll go solid till 4. For those of you who do not know, let me remind you that if you have lost a pet in the past year, we do a memorial service at 3.30 that afternoon. And we also welcome um, cremains of any pets that want to be buried up in our pet cemetery which is behind our outdoor worship area up on the hill so know that's going on uh, this week i am gone from this afternoon until tuesday afternoon but you all are covered by mother pat and by deacon josh i'll be back tuesday afternoon because wednesday we're going to hit the ground running 5 15 we start packing those 70 plus sack packs six o'clock we have evening worship 615 Bible study. We're talking about Samuel now, the priest and the prophet, for whom not one but two books in the Bible are named, and no other person, no other person has their name on two books besides Samuel. So come find out what is so special about this man called Samuel. 
We'll read first chapter and halfway through the second, and we'd love to see you there. And you know what? It is time to do the blessing. So children of all ages are invited forward for the final blessing. They've been waiting. That's exactly right. Hands up. Can you raise your hand? Let us remember that Christ has no hands or feet on this earth but our own. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and be generous to give. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the closing hymn, Ye Holy Angels Bright. Thank you all.